Well wishes and get well to the great John Williams. What is that? Us, Luke. That's right. Everyone's taking his context, his words out of context, or who knows what the hell he's saying. <laughs> Shout out Council is about to start now. That's the tease. We're twins for you guys. <laughs> it's the beginning of the show. It's Thursday morning. <laughs> I've had two cups of coffee, so I have no excuse. It's Christian Harloff here, a.k.a. Darth Harloff, a Harloff Miner, and I'm joined by the council. The council, well, as always for today, it's Mr. Ken Knapsack. Kylo Ken, hello, sir. We, we have five minutes before, th- before the show, Cody comes in. Christian, what are your teases? We all decide them, and, and that usually is what happens. Let me tell you something. <laughs> yeah. I hate those teases. I know you do. I hate them. They were, they were, they were, they were introduced on a yeah. different show. Yeah. And they made their way here. It's not like Cody's a, fault. Like a Cody, virus? Yeah, it's just the way that it's built. So, it's, yeah. so it's, Cody's running them now. Good job, um, Cody. But anyway, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, I'm uh, here, though. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you here. Ash Crossan is here, yeah. returning us after um, being unfaithful to us, but I like that, it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I've never cheated on you guys. All right. Yeah. Fine, I believe you. Been over on like Council of Jedi. I, I hear it. I what is that? She's I been know. acting like a Sith lately, but maybe she'll go back to the light side. I right? know. Uh, no. no? You know. Are you still going to Whole Foods? Oh, yeah, of course I am. Oh, yeah. I finally went, went over to the barbecue corner. Isn't it great? I can't All leave. four corners really? of that place. Yeah. Delightful. Yeah, if I ever had complained to you about being, uh, uh, being overweight, just remind me that I go to the barbecue, barbecue corner. They have apartments above there. I'm thinking about it. My daughter does say that my, my daughter was going to go with my wife the other day, and she goes, I'll go with you, but only if I get a sample of the free pizza. I mean, your kid's smart. She's very smart. Uh, hey, can I start the show by wishing a happy birthday? Thank you. To a uh, friend of the show, Jennifer Murrow, uh, wrote the first two seasons of Forces of Destiny. It's her birthday today. Yeah. Tweet Jennifer at Jennifer Murrow, M U R O, and say that the Collider Jedi Council says happy birthday and thanks for Forces and of Destiny. And a belated happy yeah. birthday to the producer of the show. And yeah. going up for the championship tomorrow on the Schmodown is the outlaw John Roca. So happy birthday, belated birthday to the outlaw. So Ooh, it's yeah. birthday wish time, and it's also now talk Star Wars because it's time for Star Wars movie news. Is there stuff going on in the world of Star Wars in the movie news? Well, we're going to find out. Ken, what do we got? Well, there, you know, it's not a big news cycle right now. No. We know that, which is actually good. We get to talk about some of the, you know, the little more fun corners of the universe. We can speculate, do all that kind of stuff. But news that it's that kind of news that makes you kind of tense up at first. I believe it's going to be all right. But John Williams had to pull out of a, a concert uh, overseas, I do believe. Yes, London. At, uh, Royal Albert Hall, the very famous Royal Albert Hall. Uh, the 86-year-old been uh, scheduled to appear at the London Symphony Orchestra and had to pull out. Uh, he was said to be getting uh, good medical treatment. We don't know what it was, but hey, the guy's 86. He's still doing this, so take a deep breath. I know, but here, here's, the, here's the thing that we all, we, we know this when it comes to John Williams. He's 86 years old. He is a yeah. bull. The guy performs at the, yeah. you know, every year at the Hollywood Bowl. He's scoring movies left and right. He's doing the saga films. He's 86 years old. Yeah. So this was the conversation that we had when the new trilogy came to be and John Williams was like well how long will John Williams be able to do it to where just you know because it's exhausting there's a lot of stuff to happen plus 86 87 88 I mean it's 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 tough and you know the fact is eventually hopefully it's 15 20 years from now right we will lose With advances him. in modern medicine maybe 200 300 years maybe so but the but the point is the point is that eventually such as life we will lose the great man I don't want it to be today I would rather it be in many years from now, but we, I think we're getting to a place to where he's got to slow down. I think we just, yeah. have, we, that's, that's just, it's yeah. inevitable. Hey, it's like, it, it's my grandfather just turned 94 yeah. last week. And yeah, we, he's out there gardening and, and working hard and it's kind of what keeps him going, but right. at the same time, it's kind of what is hurting him. So I understand what you're saying, but yeah, it's that type of type of thing. It's a, it's a real realistic side of life we all know we all know but uh you know uh, it, it uh i don't want to think about that time right but such is life such is life <laughs> uh ash do you think bump in the road here uh just because you know he got sick gonna get over it right back to work or should he you know look at it and say let me relax a little bit here let me yeah. chill out because we don't know if he started scoring Episode nine yet? Probably not, because they just started shooting it. So I wouldn't imagine that he started. Yeah, that usually it. is pretty late in the process. If uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not yeah. a film composer. I wouldn't be surprised if he if he steps back from it. I wouldn't be does surprised. Does he have like? Does he have a protege? Because I know wasn't it like Dudamel came in and did some stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that there's tons, obviously, from uh, the people that are 
I mean, inf- I mean, who's not influenced by him? But you know, yeah. you look at guys like Steve Jablonski, or I mean, Kevin Kiner. I think is someone they gotta start looking at. They, I mean, yeah. I know it's I know it's Michael Giacchino is the one that they always go to, but I, I, I gotta tell you, I think that you gotta start looking at Kevin Kiner down the road to do. I mean, even if it's not the saga films, but mm-hmm. to take because he's he really, if you look at his work in Rebels and in Clone Wars, he plays he pays such homage to John Williams but also giving his own spin. And I think that he's the guy that they should really start paying attention to. I think Kevin kind of really understands how to use it, the music well, and not that uh, the other uh, composers, you know, with John Powell. So I actually really like the solo score, but it takes a lot from John. I mean, John Williams, other than doing the solo theme itself, right. there's a lot of, he's kind of credited, you know, Powell kind of reworked some of the stuff, I think very well. But um, I think Kiner even has it better. Kiner understands how do you Star Wars music right. at, at, at certain times, much like John Williams? I've, John Williams brings out so many emotional moments for me. Like, there's moments where I would not usually cry, but I do because his score is there, where right. other, like in the, the other films, I don't feel that way. Mm. Yeah, I think that, look, this is something, hopefully, you know, he, he, he gets, he just kicks right back into it, does nine, and then says, all right, guys, I'm going to retire, and he just kind of chills out and does his thing. He doesn't overwork himself. Or... He just keeps on working, like you said with your with your grandfather and uh, right. and, and doing the gardening. You know, it's like that's what keeps him going. That's what he wants to do, and he's going to do it until he until he does it. Right. And he's going to you know go out the way he wants to go out. So, right. uh, whatever it is, we wish John Williams well. He is an absolute legend. He is a god when it comes to the world of musical scores and movies and everything that he's done. So, I, I think it's it's silly to say that. I think everybody out there is 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 rooting for him. Everybody out there is praying for him. So, we just once again, give our thoughts and prayers to the great John Williams. All right, Ken, what's next? Next up, uh, Mark Hamill and uh, Twitter and social media having fun. Yeah. Uh, gosh, I love Mark Hamill, and mm-hmm. he's so outspoken. So, what happened here? Tell us. Uh, what happened <laughs> is, uh, and our, and our uh, Bonnie Burton ran a good uh, kind of summary of what happened on CNET is what I'm reading right now. But he tweeted out, um, I think he also put on Instagram too, but definitely on tweet, tweet he tweeted out some frames I'm from tweeter. Last Jedi comic adaptation, which is, by the way, great. Gary Whitta, Whitta wrote it. I know Michael Walsh did some of the art, at least the first couple episodes, episodes, issues. I always say that. Um, but it is it is his, his Luke's death scene, and it's beautiful art. Uh, the the art of Luke facing the gorilla walkers in the First Order is spectacular. It's a big splash page. Great stuff. So he tweeted that out, and he said, The Force killed Luke. You have to acknowledge the irony in his fate. Almost like an addict that kicked his habit cold turkey, remained clean for decades, only to reuse just once, and then tragically overdoses. Hashtag side, uh, sad Skywalker. Force fatality, Jedi junkie, and I think a lot of people ran wild with that. We're not going to run wild with that. We're going to no, talk about the it's fun. fun. It's fun because if you look at the way it's actually broken down, he's right. It's like you know he hadn't used it in so long, right? And then he's sitting there, uses it in a way that we had never seen before, in a powerful way where he projects himself halfway across the galaxy, and he did it for the great sacrifice, right? And it it took it out of him, and it mm-hmm. was he used everything he could. He he knew what he was getting himself into, so in in a sense, he's not wrong. Yeah, but it's also the way that he says it is funny, and he's just in that the way that he equates it to the drug user is is great. So people lose their minds when anything. Though this is a touchy situation. Yes, it is. Anytime you bring up Luke dying, people are going to lose their minds, and I simply have three words for it: I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> As Lennon sang, "Cold Turkey has got me on the run." Uh, Ash, I don't know. You, you, you. Uh... I mean, when I saw it, I was like, "Oh my god!" When you put it like that, like I don't think the force <laughs> is quite like heroin or anything. But then, like I saw. Every single outlet on the internet write it up, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I think that's the time we're in, Christian. You said, "Like, I, I, I don't care." I, I saw this and laughed, you know. But now, now it's going to spawn yeah. debates, and that, that's kind of a, uh, that's where it gets exhausting. But can I tell you why? When I say I don't care, because people are going to forget about this as soon as the trailers start coming out for yeah. episode nine. As soon as the movie hits and it's like and we're gonna either love what happens with him as a force ghost or we're gonna hate it right, right and, and then right. that's really and, and that's gonna be the next point of conversation how they use him next he's one of the most beloved characters of all time whether you love the way he was used in eight or you don't like it you gotta get you gotta either love it or hate it and get on with it because right. now you gotta say to yourself get excited as a star wars fan and say well what's next for this character because we all know he's coming back they've announced that he's coming back how much i think it would be a mistake if they don't use him a lot 
I think it would mm-hmm. be a huge mistake if he just shows up kind of like Alec Guinness did in, in Return of the Jedi, like just like for a few scenes. I think he should be there because of what he did and the way he set it up with Kylo Ren, where he's just like, if you strike me down now, I'm going to be around. I'm gonna, basically, I want to haunt your ass. It's just like the same way the memories yeah. of your dad are gonna, it's going to haunt your ass. Like, that's yeah. the kind of, type of stuff that I loved I, in Last Jedi. I'd love some yeah. literal spiritual warfare. You yeah. know, Sith ghosts. We don't really have Sith ghosts, but there's some. Yet. There's some yeah, yet. Right. Uh, but also there's some, there's some new, you know, I don't want to say new canon, but we're getting more into more about Sith hauntings. Right. Uh, I finally read Vader issue 22, and I didn't like it as much as other people did, but that's fine. Um, I just don't gravitate to old Republic kind of stuff, and that's a, there's it's a, there's a lot in there. Um, Again, yet, <laughs> yet, <laughs> yet, right? Uh, yeah, well, yet until it comes on, until yeah. it comes on in an organized fashion, right. and then this is so. Um, but uh, the Sith Lord moment, uh, it, it's there's definitely hauntings. There's definitely there's definitely Sith uh, dark force users out there in the. Uh, other planes of existence. So uh, it would be kind of be interesting if Luke's fighting things from the other side. What do you make of this, Ash? This of whole, Luke being a nine? Well, I have all of this stuff, too. Again, I know that you, you, you kind of commented on it, but I think that should we, like, when it comes to Luke and the way that he went out, like, your overall thoughts on what he could then become, what he's accepted as a Jedi in the, and in a Force Ghost. Like yeah. he's, he's accepted it now. We know that was kind of his whole entire arc. The stuff that I actually really liked was that he was now going to be, he, he, I love that line at the end, I am not the last of the Jedi, and then the shot of Rey, but he's going to be there. Right. One way or another, he's going to be there. How do you feel about the I, way that's going to pan out? I had wondered, you know, when they announced that, if, he, if it was always the plan for him to come back, because I, I had kind of gotten the feeling that he wasn't originally going to be in Nine. It was going to kind of be Carrie Fisher's movie. And then with her passing, I think it felt like that's why they were bringing him back. I'm not sure. But um, with him coming back, I mean, what I love is I felt like the original trilogy made the Force a very, it's not simple, but it made it feel kind of simple, like as a kid. And I like that this new trilogy is exploring the complexity of the Force and Mm. the ways it can go. So... I'm super excited to see like him just not come back as just a force ghost and sit there and give a couple lessons and leave. Like, what are the possibilities of this? Yes, and I think that one of the things too is that the, a big question that came in is how powerful can they be? Because, like we saw in the original trilogy, and JT always points to it, Obi Wan can sit on a log, so mm-hmm. a force ghost can sit on matter. Right, mm. and then we see in Last Jedi that Yoda can use the Force, split trees, and t- set trees on fire with lightning. Mm-hmm. Well, what the hell can Luke do? Yeah, like what's Luke going to be able to do? We know Yoda's powerful, right? But Luke has has really discovered this power, and we and, he, and did no Jedi, even Yoda, was able to project himself across the galaxy and make himself look as if he was really there fighting a lightsaber battle. So, what will Luke be able to accomplish? Will he be able to actually see him fight? Like, who knows? There's a lot. There's a lot out there. Yeah, I mean, we learned uh, a lot. I mean, in Claudia Gray's short story, was I think it's titled Master and Apprentice, which is also the name of the book coming out. Uh, you know, when, when Qui-Gon appears to Obi-Wan in A New Hope, we don't see it. It's when Luke goes off back home uh, to find that Uncle Owen Emperor are dead. Qui-Gon visits Obi-Wan, and you kind of get this real detailed explanation of what it likes to kind of, it feels like to reform yourself as a Force ghost. Um, it was almost like she was writing to JT and saying, it's okay, Alec Guinness can sit. He's old right. and, a, and a force ghost. Um, so and it's, it's exhausting. It's, it's exhausting. <laughs> it's like me walking up a flight of stairs. So yeah. uh, I, 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 I'm excited about the possibilities. Yeah. yeah. Force okay. lightsabers? Force ghost lightsabers? Yeah, maybe. It just depends. It's like because when you say it just randomly, people will go, oh, how's that going to work? Mm. But if, it's, it's like anything else. It's execution. It's right. how do you explain it? And right. if it comes off, because again, using the JTE reference, right? Like JTE sees a ghost sit on the thing. He's like, well, why is that ghost sitting on a log? If it's ex- explained throughout the entire saga and there's a reason, oh, that's why, then right. it could make sense. All right, what's, uh, what's next? All right, coming up next year is uh, the, we got the, uh, did you click on, did you see these uh, photos from episode nine? The potential no. one? No? No. Yeah, I didn't either. So, but potential spoiler alert, Cody, for people. Kind of like me, who just don't like to dive into these yeah. spoiler pictures. But this looks leaked, though. I mean, how do you? Yeah. How, no, who, that's who, what I'm oh. saying. 
I think there's an update on this. Oh, it's it's fake, right? It's I, from Pi uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Movie. Yes, you know oh, what? Really? You're, you're right. You're right because I saw that this morning. <laughs> Star Wars <laughs> Star Wars Newsnet actually really? tweeted out this morning that I, it, see, it, I, this I, is I, a fake leak. I don't even yeah. click on these stories when I see yeah. see this leak. Is, this is not this is not an accurate. Uh, but then that that goes that looks like Caesar's that. Palace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's I saw actually I saw that. this morning. Star Wars Newsnet uh, that, tweeted out and said that uh, you know this fake fake stuff, fake news. So I'd love to see that goes back to the the Hamill tweet. You dive well, in. Two words for you. Yeah. What's next? <laughs> um, Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. Sure. Probably updated that story. Sorry. Yeah. Probably, Sorry. yeah, yeah. Someone let me know here. Yeah. Uh, do you want to take? Let's take a live uh, live Twitter question. Oh. Because uh, right. we're live. Yeah, we're, sure, I'm uh, on Twitter and Facebook right now. Let's just dive in and you know, throughout the show, like some yeah. seasoning and like a salad. What are you doing here. there? I like this new. Wow. Audible. Changing up the format. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Um, uh, but I'm just trying to find one. So if you're out there on Twitter, use the hashtag Collider Jedi Council. Yeah, or the YouTubes. And we will uh, find one. Um, ah, I got this one from Christo Fear. Uh, yeah, right. P H E A R. At Christo Fear 24. What is something that you want to see explored in The Mandalorian? Let's jump to that. You Ooh. okay with this jumping around? Let's I do. Let's go I and love fly. it. Well, I think that it's something we've already talked about too, but I want to see The Mandalorian culture in live action. I know we've mm -hmm. explored it. Many times over in Clone Wars and in Rebels, but I want to see it live action. I want to see him go back to Mandalore. I want to see what's happening. Is Bo-Katan running the running the whole thing at that point? It certainly timeline wise seems like she should, or or at least a mention of what happened to her and why she's not there anymore. Right. But where are they? Where do they side with the New Republic? Where what's happening there? Why is our lead character not with the Mandalore? You know, I want to mm -hmm. the Mandalorians. I want to see. And I'm sure they're going to explore that because they're going to really kind of get into who this guy is because they say he's a lone gunman. Right. He's a lone gunslinger. And it's like, well, why is he lone? Because we know Mandalore still run, is still out there. It still exists. So it's something I think is a given that we'll see. And I would like to see it. or Otherwise, I'll be disappointed. But I think they've already kind of stamped in they're going to do that. Who do you what think do you this think? is? I think it's uh, Pedro Pascal. I mean, not in that. That's not a, in there that right now. A stand you know that's a stand-in. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 Vince Vaughn. You think it's Vince Vaughn? No. Oh, oh, you yeah. beautiful baby, you men right, Let's right. go. Oh, you're like a Ronto burger. You just, oh yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah, yeah I, uh, Pedro Pascal. I think you think Pedro. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think it's him. Yeah. I think that that leak. I think making Star Wars hit it. I think that yeah. they were right. I think that when they look, the, the thing is with with that site, mm. when they when they scoop, when they really dig in, nine out of ten times they're they're right. So yeah. I, I think Pedro Pascal is not. It was never kind of like nope. I think they kind of. Sure. Played coy, but we've the, the, his reps. Yeah, we, yeah. we've seen that before. We've seen that. we've seen that before. Seen so that before. Uh, I, I think um, so the Mandalorian culture. What's just, that? That's what your 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 answer is. You really want them to. Dive that's what into I want. What do you want? Uh, kind of the same thing. I was actually rewatching a lot of the Duchess Satine stuff in Clone Wars this week. Actually, last night, um, uh, the, her introductory episodes. Other than just Satine, I don't even want to say she's an underrated character because there's so many fans of her, but she's not talked about enough for what she does, for what she brings, and what she challenges. She, her first couple episodes, she's challenging Obi-Wan. She's talking about Jedi or Peacekeeper, yet you guys are generals in the war. Oh, it's wonderful stuff. It's a perfect match for Obi-Wan and adds layers to that character. What is the legacy of that? Because you, you get to go to Mandalore and you see this different, exciting world. We go back in Rebels, but it's a different time and it's yeah. war-torn and again. And that's where Bo-Katan, her sister, comes back. I, I just don't see Filoni leaving that on the table. I, I, right, you know, he's got that cowboy hat on the set right now, and he's doing. He's working on a series called The Mandalorian, and you don't think he's going to have some reference? He, it's got to happen. Of course he will, because yeah. he's be able to, to connect and tell the story, yeah. recontinue the story that he's been telling in two different shows. In yeah. he's told more Star Wars stories than anybody. Yeah, like if you look at everything that he's done throughout bo all the Clone Wars. Well, I mean, George Lucas actually counts too because of the because of his involvement through the yeah. Clone Wars. Just a, Probably George first, and then and then Dave. But they're neck and neck in regards to how many. If you look at episode by episode and how much he's done, um, Filoni no, really wants to continue stuff on. And, and he's he's proven to be a caretaker for his specific stories. Exactly. Ahsoka, mm -hmm. Rex, now Ezra, Sabine, maybe. And he's you know. so protective over him because when I had the chance, I sat down with him for like half an hour that that day, um, and when I asked him about when people want to use Ahsoka, I'll never forget it. He was just like, they can use her, but they got to ask me first. Like he's got, he's got like, you can't use Ahsoka unless yeah. you talk to Filoni first. And I think that when he's on there, and again, this is this is really the reason I think when we predicted it 
a year ago when they announced this show, whatever it was, that Filoni would be involved one way or another is because of the relationship that he has with Favreau right. and what he's done with Favreau. And if you're Favreau, why do you not want this guy? And it yeah. speaks volumes that he's doing the pilot. Yeah. That's your vision of what you want for this series. Who's going to be my director to get that done? The guy that knows it, the guy that can connect right. other storylines in. Because there's going to be references in this show mm -hmm. that we'll understand that other people won't, but it won't take away. They're very similar to like Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. There's stuff in Game of Thrones that Ken watches, goes right over my head, that he gets like that from all these, whether it's novels or stuff. <laughs> Come the hound was the grave digger. It did just like the books. Yeah, that's and exactly <laughs> how I sound. But it doesn't take away from my experience. Right. But you geek out because of it. And that's what you're going to yeah. see in mm -hmm. this show. Those mm -hmm. like gasp moments where someone's yeah. watching yeah. with me and I'm like, oh, and they're like, what? The I'm adventures like, oh, of the team. The, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. dark saber. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah. What, what do you expect? From this uh, story wise, I'm kind of just like no expectations laid on me because I had that's so good many spot expectations to be yeah. for all the movies and then I get yeah. let yeah. down or more excited or whatever. But behind the scenes wise, there's so many directors that I love and I hope they all get to put their own spin on it because that I think that's like my biggest fear is that they're all going to be like muted because they want the show to be oh I don't think so I think I think you don't you don't bring in the, the, the like I want a Taika Waititi episode that you well, we're, you mean the way that he structures yeah like I want a weird you, you, episode you can't bring that guy in and not expect him to do what he does I think they're gonna have to follow the scripts and they're yeah. gonna have to follow the arcs of where they want to go because it's serialized television but yeah you bring those guys in because you want their stamp on it you want to know that it feels but I also but to the flip side of that is, I also don't want it to feel out of place. Like, I want to whack yeah, the episode. Yeah, no, I agree with that. But yeah. if but no wacky weight jokes, yeah, yeah. But right, <laughs> right. But wacky can happen inside of Star Wars. Yeah, it can. What's yeah. the planet? What's, where are they? What happens in that particular thing? Oh, that's perfect for this goofy kind of thing that they, that they kind of stumbled into. Yeah, well, he's, he's, he's great for that. But if it just feels off, and it's like, well, we just wanted him to direct an episode, so even though that's not necessarily the way that the characters would go, we could get him for this episode, so we let him fly. I understand the concern. I don't think that's going to happen, though. I think that they all want to carry the arc from A to B, 10 episodes, really develop, and they know everybody's going to be watching this thing, and they want to deliver mm -hmm. all the way through. So mm -hmm. I can't wait. I'm so excited for this show. Sign me up. Some great questions are starting to come in here, by the way, live Let's on just go. Let's Twitter. just go with it. This is a fun one for, yeah. specifically for Ash. Oh. 402 Fett at Bronconius asks, will the leader of a poor cult be revealed and then challenge Kylo Ren for the title of Supreme Leader <laughs> in Episode Nine? <laughs> This is because I I think this is because I tweeted last night and I was like, why am I not a cult leader? Because I feel like I should be. Mm -hmm. And somebody was like, you kind of are. And then like nine people were like, Pork. you are. Yeah. yeah, so. You started the pork revolution. Mm -hmm. ah. yeah, yeah. Pork rights. Uh -huh. Pork rights, uh -huh. pork yeah. nation, so, pork all of it. Um, yeah. yeah, I definitely think that's going to happen in episode nine. I think okay. that's going to be the mm -hmm. main. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Will we see those stupid things in, in nine? Stupid, uh, stupid things. things. What? What? How dare you? What did I say? How dare you? Oh, sorry. Yeah. This so, is why. This so. is why I'm cheating on you. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. Because um, I couple, can't control myself. To <laughs> so go back to the Luke thing, we had a couple yeah. tweets coming here, and uh, kind of the same same thought. And I want to Jordan Davis at Casually JD and Samuel Varg at Magic. Detainer. Oh. Uh, so Samuel writes, Hi, Clutter, uh, Jedi Council. Luke reforming himself back from being a Force Ghost to become flesh and blood again. And then Jordan says, How would the Council feel about Luke Skywalker getting the Gandalf treatment being sent back because the task wasn't finished? I, turn to you, I return to you now. The turning of the tide or whatever the quote is. Okay. I'm bad at quotes. You I know that. I need you to fill me Can in I? on the Lord of the Rings thing. Okay. Well, so there was nine That's not rings. my forte. Yeah. Uh, well, Gandalf doesn't necessarily ever fully die necessarily he just kind of goes into right. this pit with, right uh, i see that I yeah i see that ball or whatever it's called and he comes back from gandalf the gray gandalf the great again the white, white. Yeah. is when he comes back he just comes it's a, through time and space all this i, I don't rachel christian's not here but you know there's yeah. it's a transfer it's not it's not necessarily it's the, the same, same thing, thing in your mind okay but, I, I understand what you're saying yeah because luke dead disappears dead. gone yeah. poof so, I think it's a tricky situation for two different reasons. If mm -hmm. you if you make him, yeah, I'm not dead anymore. I'm just gonna kind of right. fill it back up, and just, right. then it's like, well, that's kind of cheating it. And the yeah. second thing is, then you really look like, hey, Ryan Johnson. Yeah, eh. yeah. You know, it's like, and I know some people feel like, yeah, do that, but for political in general, whether JJ yeah. loves it or hates it, right, you, right, you can't do it. Yeah, I think I'd have a bit of a. Not a problem again execution right we always talk yeah. about anything's crazy like 
Yoda coming back to lightning bolt a tree I might not have liked until I saw it. Now it's one of my favorite sequences in Star Wars. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I get the concept. The concept yeah. makes sense. You turn him into Jesus. He does yeah, that. yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and Anakin might have already been that, right? So, yeah. um, but... I, I, there's an ang- there's like a 10% angle on me that's like, all right, I see what you're doing with that. That's something interesting. The force itself, I like this idea that the force awoke uh, and, it, and it came back and then that it's trying to, this theory, you know, a lot of people thoughts about Ray being born of the force were simply, it was to make, to make right for creating Anakin or having it part, you know, there's where the force is kind of its own little thing. I get behind that a little bit. I love that kind of weird stuff, um, Mortis and all that stuff. So, I understand it. I understand it. Uh, I don't want it to be a world between world situation either. But overall, I think I'd rather not have that. Ash. Yeah. Same. Co-signed. How come? Uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not letting you off the hook. Oh, damn it! Yeah. <laughs> it's so complex. Um, I don't know. Come on. I don't know. <laughs> you do know. <laughs> it's, it's, do you do you want to see him come back as a force, just force ghost, or do you want to see him come back and he, he, if he could repair himself, come back, be flesh and blood? I, would you be okay? with I it? feel like see other. Like I want to see something that I haven't seen yet. I, yeah. I feel mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. there's got to be some kind of in between. I don't think he should just come back flesh and blood. And I think force ghost. I think he's kind of evolved beyond that and, and can do something more than that. It like could that. be a fist bump moment, though, for the crowd, for a lot of the audience that didn't want him to go out. If right. he comes back and he's just... Because they did say that he... You know, there's, there's ways to do it. There's mm-hmm. ways to do it. I think it's always going to feel kind of like a little bit of a cheat if they do it, but I st- I, I, there's a lot of the audience that would love it. And there's other parts of the audience that wouldn't... Uh, I think wouldn't embrace it at all and say it was kind of a cheat. So who knows? Who knows? That's, uh, but that's why we speculate. Let's ask this question from sure. Kevin James Murphy. Nice. All, all right. right. At uh, <laughs> Nivikian13. If you uh, follow me on Twitch, I'm so bad at usernames. Mm. Uh, I usually make up my own versions of them. Um, he asks this. Do you think the GOT guys are going to do Revan? Which I guess the re- first question is, do you think they're going to do anything in the yeah. Old Republic uh, or like it? Yeah. Uh, uh, since the Mandalorians opened up Mandalore, do you, where do you think they might go? You understand this and read this more than I do and sure. play the game. I know some of these names. I know what their figures look like. I don't know what is the best choice. Malik, um, Revan, Bane. I don't think they're going to go with any of that New stuff. New guy. I think they'll definitely go back, whether they call it the Old Republic or whatever they're going to call it, but mm-hmm. we'll, they're going to go back, all the way back. Okay. But do they, do they explore some of the stuff that we know with Revan and Malik and Bane? I don't think they're going to go there. I don't think that's going to be the focus of it, I think, because mm-hmm. one of the hungers that we're missing is a lot of the, the Sith and Jedi and lightsabers and things, too. And I don't necessarily know if you need all that stuff inside of this new trilogy. Of, uh, with, with, it, it seems already that they've made it clear in this new trilogy. It's a few people have the Force, again, very similar to the OT. And there's a few lightsaber battles, very similar to the OT. But if you go back... All the way back when there was a bunch of Sith before Bane, because this is canon, mm-hmm. um, where in the because in the Drew Carpician novels, which aren't canon anymore, right? In the Bane novels, which are absolutely incredible, I don't care if they're legends or I've canon. read the first one, I really oh, like it. Yeah. so good. And in that first novel mm-hmm. that you read, Bane w- was under the philosophy for a long time that the Sith could never work together because they're right. always trying to crave power and they're killing each other within that they're never ever going to take over the Jedi and beat the Jedi because they can't work together. It's right. just never going to happen. And he knows that the only way to do it is for one person to have the power and one person to crave the power and work together and have a rule of two. That was right. Bane created that. Right. So Bane sets off this Sith bomb and kills all the Sith. Kills them all, just starts training one person. That was made canon for the most of it yeah. when in Clone Wars, yeah. where Bane was voiced by Mark Hamill. Um, and he and Yoda stumbles upon the ghost of Bane. He says, basically saying, You took out all the Sith, you, you, you created the rule of two, and that's, that's who you are. So that's still in there. But this, I think. The Benny Off and White stuff will happen before any of that. Mm. So let's see the rise of the Sith. Let's see the rise of the Jedi. Let's see an actual war like you're taught with Game of Thrones. Yeah. Imagine a battle. It's very similar where Jon Snow is out with the sword, but it's a saber. Yeah. And here comes, and, and not, not the Geonosis type fight. Mm. I'm talking like a big kind of Braveheart type lightsaber battle in the old school days. That's where I think they're going. Yep. Yep. That's it. Why? No, we've talked. Well, we, no, we, why? Why? No, yeah. I'm just. Do I'm it. like craving 
like 70,000 lightsabers. Like I, I, I like everything we've been doing. I'm really excited about the Mandalorian, but I'm just like, give me some lightsaber battles. Give me some Jedi. Give me some Sith. Like I'm, yeah. I'm craving it so bad. And I feel like that's where they need to go. There's a hunger for it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a hunger for and it. And just right imagining now. like, yeah, one of those like episode nine Game of Thrones battles with all lightsabers. Oh my God. Ken? Yeah. Uh, again, I've, I've I've talked about this definitely on Force Center a lot. It's I should wear it as a T-shirt. War, war or the lore, and I I don't gravitate towards the lore of Jedi and Sith. I go towards the war between the Empire and the Rebellion. Yeah. But um, part of it is, is 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 too many. Like I like less lightsabers in a weird way. Not to counter you, not to argue with you there on it. I just How like dare you? I like the the rarity of it. That's and never that it been your something. thing. You're more the, the and, and, that's, yeah. and I know there's a lot like me, and I yeah. know there's more like you, and definitely more like you. I hear about the old Republic all the time. Every time I'm on Twitch, you know, yeah, play play KOTR. Play you really KOTR. should. Um, Story just, wise, you should. I totally and I totally can get behind and I love cool bad guys. How much is your tier to make you watch that? Because I'll I'll join up. <laughs> I'll I'll thousand dollars a month. I'll play the game just for you. Pass. Uh, <laughs> Pass. Uh, uh, yeah. So so I. That's why I and I. But you just said it because I, I obviously love what Dan and Dave have done Game of Thrones. And depending on which directors they bring in, who you know Miguel Sapochnik, who does the big battle, a lot of big battle episodes. Yeah. I, I'm I'm not like hearing what you're saying and going. Pass. Right. I'm going, okay. Totally want to see it. I just want to see it all kind of. It actually. I'm a perfect kind of uh, audience for it because. Uh, there's too much out there. Legends or what doesn't matter. I want to see it filtered into some nice series of movies that I can grasp and understand yeah. and sit down. Mm-hmm. And I can understand that like, if you look at the fear of well, what the fear could be on the Lucasfilm side of things, right? Mm-hmm. Is well, these are if we go that far back into time, right. will we lose the audience that doesn't? That there's no Luke, there's no mm-hmm. Han, there's no Ray, there's no this. I think that that becomes so more. It's so exciting, depending on again who you cast, mm-hmm. right. who you get to direct these things, the marketing behind the fact that Game of Thrones television creators bring you this series. Um, I think, and with a great trailer, because if you look at the trailer of the Old Republic, not Knights Old Republic, but the Old Republic, and the trailer between when I think it, when, when they have the Sith and the Jedi doing this battle, it's emotional, it was crazy, and I remember it was when we didn't have any Star Wars movies, I'm like, where was that movie? And the fact that we can actually get that movie is exciting. Now, I want to throw back to The Mandalorian okay. for a second, though, too, because... Why don't you tweet that as a question? I'll read it out. All right. Well, here's I'll ask you a question. The question's on the table here, too. And you're not getting away with the one-word answer here. <laughs> um, with The Mandalorian, now, what we think will be... Because we know that they're recording it now, or filming it now, and George Lucas was on the set, and we're looking at having next year is when we're going to have this show. So they haven't announced when, when right, they're going right. to launch it, but we're getting this show next year, we think. We're also getting episode nine, right? Mm-hmm. But... This Mandalorian show will travel off and probably get season two in 2020. So what Bob Iger said that they were going to scale back on movies, everyone said, well, they're going to scale back on six months in between each other. Is it possible now that they start jumping to two years between movies because you have the Mandalorian for now every year? You get it. You get it every year. So now you don't necessarily need because the goal was you're going to get Star Wars every year. Mm-hmm. Well, if you have Mandalorian every season, I wouldn't hate that. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't hate it. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's not a bad idea. Uh, I, I, again, I think when you're trying to prove your earnings quarter by quarter, I think you're going to need the money from a movie. Obviously, that's the some of the realities. Sure. But, but as a fan, just looking at it from that, this this uh, just looking at that picture as you're talking, I'm looking over. Like I love Rebels. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to really like Resistance. But that looks like Star Wars, you know what I mean? Yep. Like the anima- the animation is great, but like I'm like, okay, if that's what I only only thing I had in 2019 right. was eight to ten episodes of that ten hour movie, I'd be like, okay, yeah. we're yeah. good to go. Right. Question two: yeah. If this show is a huge success, like we think that it will be, mm-hmm. and it becomes one of the most popular things that Star Wars has done, right. will we see a Mandalorian film? Six seasons in a movie? I think uh, I think you you would be foolish not to. Yeah. What's the latest on the? Um, is that Boba Fett movie not happening? Nah, nah. I think I this, is to, a, this is a replacement. I, I, yeah. Because I talked to Simon Kinberg last night, yeah. and he was just like, "I can't say anything about that, but I'm still working with." The, and, and I was just like, "Okay." Yeah, he was. So Simon Kinberg was making a big push for a long time on that movie, and he looked. Uh, I asked him about it in 2015. Yeah. Or four, Was it 14? 
whenever it was when mm-hmm. Rebels was debuting, right? Yeah. 14, yeah. It was 14. And it was him and Filoni, and I had asked him, because I had heard rumblings about that a long time ago, that he was kind of sniffing around because he liked the Bounty Hunter tales. And he looked at me like, how the hell do you know that? Because he really wants to do uh, a Boba Fett movie. And I think he's one of the advocates for it. I don't think he wants it to die. He's yeah. dead. It because, ain't happening. Because what if this is successful and then they do that as a Mandalorian movie, not a Boba Fett movie? I think it's a missed opportunity. You mean you're saying, if, he, if you're saying them do a Mandalorian movie as opposed to a Boba Fett As movie. opposed to Boba Fett. I mean, yeah. It's just, I think it goes to Ken. It's like, let's see how successful are the seasons, um, how invested are people into it. Yeah, because I was going to say about Boba Fett, I think that if you're ever going to reveal what happened to that guy, ever, this is the place to do it. Are you ever going to reveal how it came to be? Because a full episode inside of the Mandalorian series on what happened to Boba Fett or the myth of Boba Fett or the legend of the Sarlacc pit would be fantastic. And you don't have to do a full movie. So why not have Simon Kinberg direct that episode? He comes in and he, and he directs the, the, the Boba yeah. Fett episode. Uh, David Wilson on Twitter at David Pockets 90 asks, uh, hey, do you think it's possible that Tamora Morrison could make some sort of cameo as Boba Fett in The Mandalorian, maybe leading to a, a Dread Pirate Roberts idea? You know, we've seen that tossed around about the, out, the outfit, the, the, the Boba Fett armor, which Cobb Vanth yeah. in, in Wendig seri, series has, uh, allegedly. You know, but it's pretty strongly hinted that that's what Cobb Vanth is wearing. Um, and I saw someone else tweet about Daniel Logan too. Uh, you know, maybe him showing up too. So, yeah. you, possible? You, you would you possible? Would you want that? You, you, I mean, I think you're right. This this is your time to deal with this yeah. story. It's broken records stuff for me. Yeah. It's, it's it's a, I'm, if it's a cool reveal and it mm-hmm. and it works well, and I'm not going, uh, that's how they did that. That's that's lame. Mm-hmm. Uh, because that's that's happened in many different genres and franchises. We're like, oh, that's oh, you had that payoff, and that that's. The, it's kind of a lame payoff. Yeah. But if it's a great puff and it's clever and it, and it makes sense, like, oh, wow, that's how they passed off the mantle, then absolutely I'll be, I'll be up for it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, the one thing before you switch over, let's just yeah. get to that story now that we're talking about Mandalorian. Uh, if you let's clicked on the title. Uh, yeah, let's, let's hear about the, the someone got robbed. What happened? Yeah, what's the deal with Canon? You want to jump into that? I, it, just, no, let's not even. No, I want to hear you say it. No. Let's get into <laughs> yes. what the hell happened on the uh, Police on the set. are investigating a theft on the set of Star Wars new series, The Mandalorian. Uh, this is uh, apparently some camera equipment. They've been shooting down in Manhattan Beach. All right, there's a, huh. and if, you, if you, you can look, there's a, there's the studio there. There's like a, there's a dusty dirt end there. There's some medical center parking lots nearby, I believe. Um, it's been a while since I've been over in Man. But I don't leave Burbank much yeah. anymore. Um, so police are looking at this, and it's and it's not like set stuff or props or anything. It's it's camera equipment, and and the alleged worry is that there's a memory card mm. in there, and that's why uh, sensitive information may have been jeopardized. Interesting. So so um, we know George Lucas was on the set. It's so funny you said that because I was going to say so. Someone said yesterday, like, what if it was George Lucas? <laughs> <laughs> it's Lucas and Filoni and Fabro. Good, good fella style. Yeah. <laughs> like sabotaging the whole side. You know, I'm just yeah. take it. I mean, you'll release the information. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Lucas did. Well, my favorite thing about the Lucas is that his phone spotlight was on for some random reason. Oh, I, my God. I, I, think I, was, I think they were trying to light, but it was, was great. He, was he lighting the wine? I, I, I don't know what Is he, he was, like me, where I always accidentally turn the flashlight on and I don't know it for so several minutes? It? Right below it? there, you can't see his hand. Oh. He's he got his like, phone on and like oh. the phone light he's is like, on. So maybe they're trying. I get, he's, he's like Phil lighting yeah. the phone. Yeah, yeah I get he's trying to do some lighting there, but it just also looks like Grandpa can't work his iPhone. Always directing. Speaking of Grandpa. When I get to be that man's age, yeah. and I know the answer is going to be there's no way in hell I'm going to look more like Favreau, but like I want Lucas's hair. I, that I, that's a lost hair cause is, for me. That, sh- that train me too. shipped out. Me too. I'm telling you, I'm, a long time ago for yeah, me. Favreau and I are cut from the same cloth. I, yeah. I, I, so I'm going to wind up looking like John Favreau. But like when it comes to when it comes to George Lucas, look at the hair. I think what a I'm great head of hair. Up looking like George Lucas. Maybe, maybe <laughs> so. Um, Start wearing that flannel now. I don't know who the hell's stealing <laughs> stuff. It's just you know, it's just such a stupid thing. It's like, yeah, whoever got access to it, a bunch of turds. Yeah, that, that got in there and were able to to steal some stuff. And now, now hopefully they they recapture all of it, and hopefully that the idiots. Go to jail. They're shooting on memory cards and leaving them in the cameras. Yeah, that'd be if that that'd be my concern. <laughs> that'd yeah. be my concern. That'd be like an inside job. That's where I'd start investigating. There's, right. There's I, no way. Yeah. As, as, as yeah, as someone who's investigated a lot of break-ins <clears throat> in after hours, it usually goes to the manager. Owner. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, so that stinks. Right, let's just finish. Let's 
again, yeah. I want to finish up with questions and and twits. This has been a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying to get uh, trying to get a good. Conver- Let's go to Facebook. Let's sure. go to Facebook Live. Facebook group, Jedi Face- Council Facebook. Yeah, I'm on the Facebook group there, the last fan group, as they call it. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, we were talking off air before a little bit about this event called Star Wars Celebration. And <gasps> this comes up five days this year. Ooh, that's the sound of a fresh LaCroix. <laughs> um, Paul Reaper. The Grim. The Grim Reaper. Paul the Grim Reaper. What do you realistically... Hey, wait, Paul, are you getting good at trivia? It's a great name. Trivia. <laughs> Paul the Grim Reaper. Yeah. What do you realistically expect to see at Star Wars Celebration in April? We've had this conversation kind of before, but I... Let's relive it. Let's relive it as we kind of... I, I think it's a... It's, it's interesting to wonder what we actually will get over a five-day event. <laughs> yeah, we know that the, there's going to be two big days that everyone's talking about because this is the difference mm-hmm. with Star Wars Celebration from before the acquisition um, Disney mm-hmm. to now. It is be- since 2000, and, they, and they've learned this. It, mm-hmm. What is this? Who's calling me? Sorry. What's your ring That's, Is that Mike uh, Kalinowski calling you? My wife is is, is FaceTiming me. She, she, you know, I tell her a million <laughs> times. I tell her a million times that we're on. Yeah, like, a lot yeah. of money to answer that. Uh, not right now. So we, uh, and now the stupid thing's going off. I can't control it. Um, <laughs> you got a grandpa's an iPhone. I know. Every, it's a brand new phone. I still haven't figured out how to silence a stupid thing. Uh, <laughs> Really? I'm sitting there going, how do you do this? I think, I think you just do this. Yeah. I think you just, just go. Longest rain ever. Be quiet. I know. It really is. Hey, Siri. Shh. Hey, Siri. Shh. Shh. Um, anyway, oh. Celebration, they have realized since 2015 that it is all about the news cycle. And right. they didn't realize that in 2016, and they got hit hard for it because right. of it uh, in London. It was like, oh, this is great. This is We can do it the same way yeah. as always, and the fans are going to love it, and the fans that were there. Loved it. We'll have and everyone else and watching. And e- everyone else watching for like, what's what's the big scoop? What's the oh, trailer? I was so bummed out. Oh, everybody was bummed that was tr- covering that things. In 2017, they delivered. Mm-hmm. Um, now 2018, with five days, they're going to be under the microscope, and it's going to be episode nine is going to probably right. open up the whole yeah. thing on. So it's Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Woo. That is way too long to be at a convention. I don't think they're going to do Wednesday. I think Wednesday is probably going to be opening ceremonies and all that kind of stuff, right? right? Thursdays they're going to hit hard with that's the. That's going to be nine. right? That's going to be nine. Mm-hmm. Friday's going to be Mandalorian. You think so? Yeah. Friday's going to be Mandalorian. Saturday will probably be Resistance stuff. Yeah, I think they're going to stay away from other movie stuff until like the last day. Sunday will Sunday. be very Sunday. similar to what they did with like Rogue yeah, One in, in 2015. Anaheim. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. That was, and that's like, they set the expectations so high for that future panel. And then we yeah. were in London and they were like, and see you guys later. That was <laughs> yeah. And that future panel was exciting because as we all sat down, they were like, uh, Josh Trank is sick and cannot be here today. Yeah. Right. We were all like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you know, for my money, it's 20th anniversary of Phantom Menace, and uh, I know the I, idea of getting a bunch of people back from that might not be possible, but some kind of paying homage and respect to that movie because that was the entry point for a who lot do you of think, Who do you think won't come back? Hayden. Uh, he was back no, last I think year. Hayden, Hayden will come back. He came back last year. Yeah, a- but a- he's still like... I- he just is not. I don't know. Look, he and Ellis go to the same uh, health food store yeah. here in Studio yeah. City. We'll ask him. Um, I had an interview with them and they wouldn't let us talk about Star Wars. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's sensitive, but you know. But at the same time, um, um, I, I think the biggest uh, Natalie Portman would have come back. I think she was pregnant during the last, last year, um, and that's why what kept her out. Um, I th- uh, Ahmed, I would hope, I would hope fans would embrace him with what, how he's been so open with what the effects of him were. He's such a talented, just sweet guy. If you watch his YouTube channel stuff, this, yeah. this is just a really good, thoughtful parent and human and artist. I would love to see the fans embrace. I just think that the biggest challenge is is is, is Jake Lloyd with what what it did to him, and I, I, I think yeah. that's why you couldn't have. Yeah. It wouldn't be complete to me without without him. Yeah. But I think something. I think there all should be should be a panel on Sunday afternoon celebrating uh, two year anniversary of when I finally met Ash at Star Wars Celebration oh. 2017. Let's oh just run a panel. God. Met you. We were, I think we were both drunk in the lobby. Yeah. At that hotel there. I think that's when I yeah. first met you. Like, really started yeah. like, hanging out I knew with of you. Ash, but then it was yeah. like... We knew each other before. Yeah. Full disclosure, Bar. that was the drunkest night of my entire life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, right. drank, we I drank think a lot. that should be yeah. a panel on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> when Ash met the council. That was it. Um, um, yeah, and as far as the big stuff, I mean, yeah, I think you got it right, but 
But uh, because they have the new stuff and they have kind of the legacy stuff too. Um, do we get the announcement of the Benioff Weiss thing? What it is? Do you think? I think so. I think, I think so. so. Yeah. I think it. I think that's. In fact, we're getting a lot of tweets about that too. About uh, you know David McKay tweeting, and when do you think they'll reveal the Benioff and wife, ser- wife series? Wife series? Yeah. Wife series. Benioff and his wife are doing Benioff something else. Benioff and his wife are doing yeah. a series. Um, yeah, you'd think. You'd think. You would think, but it's it's risky. They get scared now. Doing. I remember. Yeah. There was. Kathleen Kennedy had said, I don't know, it's about a year ago. She's like, we're going to have a big announcement in June about all the new movies, and it never came. And well, look, we yeah. know, we know, we have a mutual yeah. friend whose friend was in town from out of country for D twenty three for the right. announcement because he had something to do with the script of one right. of the projects, right. and it didn't happen. And it didn't happen. So yeah. they, they didn't happen. Last minute. <laughs> I think that that's the thing, though. They have enough time here. They know what's happening. They know what is expected of them now from the media, from the fans, yep. right? They have to have a game plan going into this thing. And, the, yeah. and and in five days, if you don't have a game plan, then you shouldn't be doing this. And I, I know a lot of people that are putting on that the convention in general. Yeah. They've got a game plan. And by the way, so and that's something that you got to give shout-outs to that people don't realize that, we're, and you can speak on this as well too, but yeah. Lucasfilm, yes, it's a big company. Disney, yeah. it's a big company. The people who put on their events, it's a very small team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a small team that put on their events, and they bust their butts to get mm-hmm. these things done. And I know a lot of the people that do it, and they are diehard Star Wars fans. They, they are always paying attention to what's happening inside of the world of, uh, of Star Wars and, and the fan base and what they're talking about, and they're in tune um, with this stuff too. But it's also... It's their job to set up the whole thing at the venues, make sure everything's set up, and then it is the creative people to to, pro, to help program it as well. I'm not saying those people are not creative, but but the Kathleen Kennedys and the Flonies and all that to then structure it, put it together. So it's not as clear cut as well. Disney has all this money. Why can't they put this, this, and that right. into it? A team like any other thing has a budget, yeah. has a small crew, and says. Let's get this thing done. So kudos to the team that puts on Star Wars Celebration and everybody else, too, because it's a lot of work and there's a lot of stressful things going into it. And it's also why you didn't have it last year. Yes. Or, or, or this year. Yeah, they, this they, year. They, they, yeah they, they, they needed a year off. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, um, so uh, here, here's one. It goes back to the Vader issue 22, but you don't have to have read it to, to, mm-hmm. to know. Uh, this is going back to episode nine, kind of thoughts and speculation, some of the... Some stuff. Andrew Scott at Count Druku. I like that name. Do you guys think that the Fortress, Vader's Fortress storyline in the Vader comic is teasing us a return for Mustafar in episode nine? Uh, hope to see you all at Star Wars Celebration. Um, and he talk- oh, the Jedi Fallen Order panel. That's a good, that's a good thought, too, that video game. So um, I, don't, I know you may – have you been up to date? You love the series. The love the series. I'm not up to date on it. So he's, they, yeah. they've really good – Taking a deep dive, literally into the, into the castle. castle. So what? Give me some breakdown. Uh, like uh, Spoiler alert: breakdowns for yep. those who haven't read it yet, but want to still. Uh, Vader uh, says, and we. This is not. I don't want to say conf- conflicts with some earlier information that Palpatine had sent him to Mustafar and said, yeah, you go back there, right, right? But now Vader wanted. He wanted that planet. Uh, he gave him Padme's old ship. He destroyed the ship on in route there. He had given him two Imperial architects, or one Imperial architect and her assistant. They tried to design the castle. Um, didn't like it. There is a mask that has been in a lot of other comics, particularly the first Lando one uh, that Palpatine had from his collection. It is, lack of a better word, haunted by this old Sith uh, Lord named Moment, who actually broke the rule of two, and he's mm-hmm. kind of considered even like a heretic uh, inside the Sith camp. Like They're like, we don't talk about that crazy guy. That's right. how bad he is. Um, the mask haunts people, so he haunts the architect's assistant and comes up with the design. And it's basically told Vader it is a key to moment. Us. Moment, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a key to other things, to finding other things. And right now, where we're at, he's like, "It'll bring you." I'm paraphrasing. We'll bring, we're going to bring you back to Padme. Yeah, we're going to reconstruct Padme. Like it's this thing, and so it's this lot of concept, and 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 I really love it because I love Vader's castle. Uh, I lost the, the, going deep dive into the old Republic stuff was uh, again not for me. Other people loved it. Alex and Star Wars explained. They deep dive in old Republic. St- the they old Republic stuff. They deep dive inside. They, of- for, for the, you know, it doesn't say like Revan Bay and Malik, but you get to see uh, another uh, a Shah Sith Lord who yeah. takes becomes Moment's master. You can oh, see I gotta, two Jedi sure. showing up and having a big fight. All right, I gotta I gotta read this one. You might like it more. That's, and that's, I like and singing I liked my it. songs. I liked it, but yeah. um, all of it. I don't necessarily ever think. That this stuff means it's going to tie to the movies because usually it's the other way around. They put something in the movies and tie it back to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Vader's castle is so intriguing. It was something that we 
you know, if you're a fan from the 80s, you'd heard, you know, the, the Macquarie design of a castle for Vader was supposed to be an empire, all this stuff. To actually finally see it was exciting. Kylo Ren, if they're, if they're really picking up anything of search of his past or who he worshipped or cool who he wants to, go to be, there, right? it'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, I would I'm, like... I'm rambling, I'm sorry. You're not it rambling, excites, no. It excites me. So I, I'd like the idea. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I like the idea. I agree with you, and I think that what it also would do is that it would tie together some of the standalone movies. It mm-hmm. it ties together Rogue One. If we can see, like, oh, that's the, that's the castle from Rogue One. That, that then starts to do what we've kind of been hoping all the movies, in one way or another, could do and that's all tied together and yeah yeah i know you can say well the rogue one does that with episode four but you know what i mean i'm talking yeah. about more yeah. of the the new trilogy with this one rogue one the new movies that were made and if you see that castle something brand new that they introduced in rogue one yeah which i consistently back, forget was even in there right it's so brief it's and it's great though and yeah, i think to have to have that happen again with kylo going back there that'd be a nice like oh that's the that's mm-hmm. kind of going back to what i said before when you see the, the the castle itself and they reveal that it's Vader's castle, if you pick up that it was in Rogue One, great. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, mm-hmm. you don't lose anything, you just know it was Vader's castle. Right. And right. I think that they could benefit from that. Who knows? Be, it'd be interesting. I, I'd yeah. love, to, love to see it more and more. Uh, Let's do two more. Two more. All right. I got this, uh, this one here from, uh, uh, it's actually a pre-selected one. Actually, no. Okay. We'll close the show with that one. Sorry about that. Um, all right. Um, we got a, a, a Ash, Ash tweeted out using the hashtag Jedi Council. Oh, I did, yeah. Um, we got a couple questions coming in uh, about this one, so I want to answer this one. Uh, uh, Ronan Beatmaker, Kolos Ronan, uh, Kolos uh, Ronan yeah. Beatmaker says, what are the chances that the Mandalorian series will tie into the search for Sabine by the request of Sebo Katan? Much love. Uh, saw this pop up a couple times here in the tweets, so if you asked it, uh, congratulations. Um, Filoni? Caretaker of his stories. Uh, we know the Sabine, Ezra, Ahsoka, maybe even Thrawn. Yeah. I don't know if this is the place, but tying to it, mentioning it, something in like Mandalorian? that. In Mandalorian? Yeah. Is there what you're saying? Um, we'll tie in. I mean, we got that kind of, I think, last week or something, too. Um, a mention of something along the lines of, of because it is, it is the same timeline mm-hmm. to where, depending on if Ahsoka is ever mentioned inside of it, would be a nice nod to fans of same thing because of because of the mandalorians and they could ask where satine has been mm-hmm. or sabine has been um then they could uh they could kind of tie that in there the same way i don't think you'll ever see it but a mention i think is is not out of the realm of possibility yeah think? i'm hoping it's it's mentioned and it's kind of those gasp moments that yeah. we we're talking about but i think if they just like bring characters and it's gonna confuse the general like i think they want mass appeal for this and i think not that that can't do that, but I think it's it's a little too complex. Mm-hmm. All right, what's next? All Last right, one. final one here uh, for the day, right? This yep. is from uh, tying it to how we started the show. This is from Joe Farrelly at Joe Ed Farrelly. So, what is your favorite John Williams track from Star Wars? For him, it's Battle of Endor, particularly mm. the final Luke and later confrontation. So, in honor of John Williams, and hopefully get well soon, John. Some of our favorite Star Wars songs. Uh, songs, you know, well, you know, yeah. Lapty Nex's song, Lap song. Huh. Um, Jedi Rocks. Um, favorite score pieces from Star Wars from Williams? Uh, the Emperor's theme or the Sith's theme mm-hmm. in general. It's just to me, like, again, mentioning that, that Bane trilogy. Mm-hmm. I listened to that particular theme in loop for all three of the books. That explains oh all three of the It fits, it just fits it so well. And it's the, it's that Sith theme. I think to me, and Vader's death, mm-hmm. uh, that, that scene, that, that's a, one of my favorite mm-hmm. pieces also because of the kind of sad Vader theme that they play, mm-hmm. the, the piano in the background as yep. he finally, the last lights go out and that right. plays of this kind of tragedy. It, it, it said everything. So those, mm-hmm. those are my two favorite pieces. Mm. Mine's, um, what's the Binary Sunset song called? It's the binary sunset force theme, yeah. The force yeah. theme, yeah. yeah. That, um, but then even more specifically, mm. Jedi Steps in Finale at the end of uh, yeah, Je- Force I mean, Awakens. It's good. I've talked about that. So I used to work out to that well, that's song. Mine. That's, I, said, I said it before <laughs> on the show. That's my alarm. That's my alarm music. Oh my God, yeah. it's mine too. It's, it's, are you serious? More information on the panel at Star Wars Celebration. Oh Ash and Ken, when they met. God. It yeah. just like wakes yeah. you up really nicely really nice. and, then it, and yeah. then it builds no, that's a great and one. then you definitely wake up. Oh, love yeah. it. Uh, you know, there's, I mean, obviously there's so much to choose from. Um, 
Uh, I love Padme's ruminations. I love the opening battle uh, sounds of Revenge of the Sith. Boom, boom, something very different from him. Ray's theme, um, Leia's theme, Vader's, I mean, Imperial March. Um, oddly enough, though, two that always that I hum more than anything um, is the Ewoks. Dun, 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 and then Yoda's me. theme. Yoda's theme, yeah, Yoda's for me, great. might be one of the more moving uh, yeah. pieces because there's, there's such, it's, there's a layer of hope in it that is that I that I really love and I love hearing it and I loved hearing it in Last Jedi again too so uh, that one's well there you go how about you guys what are some of your favorite John Williams Star, Star Wars Star Wars tracks go ahead and put them here in the comments if it's live great do it live mm-hmm. but if not do it on the replay and speaking of the replay make sure that you like and comment and go to the Jedi Council apple podcast page subscribe over there it's great to listen to in the car or at the gym or if you also not only our show the rule of two with mark riley and mark fernandez they have a show that they do every week you can only get it if you listen to it on podcast form and if you don't have a, an iphone just go to podcast one and listen to it over there for everything else so guys thank you so much i'd like to thank ash cross and where can they find you online um mostly twitter at ash cross and that's where i post everything i'm doing when i'm cheating on them mm-hmm. you'll see mm-hmm. what i'm doing it's always pinned ken knapsack Follow me at Ken Knapsack. That includes YouTube with my motivations with Ken series, Knapsack Files, classic episodes. Uh, might even put the one where you and I sat down and talked a long time ago. We'll Would put love that it. up on the classic feed. So that's there as well. Bye. And for me, Christian Harloff at Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget, tomorrow, once again, is the big title match, one of the biggest ones since I'd say Roca and Merle. We have John Roca trying to get the championship back from William the Beast Bibiani. What a feud. Ooh, very heated. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey, everybody. Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now. And share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.